Okay, so in this video, we are prepping Izzy to be able to go on a plane, also just to help her become a more resilient dog that can deal with more stressful scenarios. She has a history of really bad separation anxiety, um, very disrespectful towards owners, nipping, biting, uh, trying to play constantly. You're gonna see a little bit of that in the video. I let some of it go and then kind of shut her down. Honestly, just to see if I could, I didn't wanna shut down too much because Jitter nervousness, when a dog is nervous, they'll revert to certain behaviors. And uh, because I'm working on something where I do want a little bit of drive in her, I decided to just try to let a little bit of it go and then see if I could control her pretty quickly. And, and I could, but you at home, you might be working on something that makes your dog nervous and they revert to doing the same thing, which leads to nipping or biting you or your feet or the leash or whining in place. Like you might see some after effects of that in the evening. So if that's the case, don't let it go as much as I let it go. I was really kind of feeling her out. Um, and I didn't do any more, I think twice. I let her kind of get to that jittery, nervous, frantic state um, because I let her off and rewarded her, good job. And then she took some of that jitteriness and kind of took it out on me. It was like a little bit of the old Izzy. But here's the thing, it's, it's playfulness and there's nothing wrong with playfulness if you can control it. But just to, so for some context, you know, she has a history of not being able to be around even multiple people or other dogs because she's shaking with so much arousal. And so please just keep that in mind is that how you do it with each dog is gonna be a little different depending on what behavioral things you're working on with that dog. It's also why I didn't pull food out with Izzy because I knew that that would make it 10 times worse. Whereas a lot of dogs, I use food on this exercise calmly. And so you just gotta play around, figure out what works best for you and your dog that doesn't feed too much into also the behavioral issues that you've worked so hard to overcome. Good. 
This is sort of a rocking chair. Sit. Good. Just gonna move it. Good. Another little tip, if you guys happen to have a bass speaker at home, we have one, but I just realized it was boxed up and it wasn't plugged in for the video, but I will pull that out. That is really helpful as well to prepare them for a flight. So you can do all of those things and instead you're adding a bass speaker instead of just playing something over the YouTube channel. Um, another thing is a rocking chair. So I spoke to a few service dog trainers um, over the years, you know, getting ideas for this. A really common one is they'll use the rocking chair. I just like to find other ways to do it as well. Um, if you don't have a rocking chair, which I didn't, but then I realized one of my patio furniture chairs was kind of like a rocking chair. But anyway, just to give you guys lots of ideas to, to play with at home. Just things that are hard that kind of throw them off a bit. If you have bleachers at the park, do the bleachers. Um, anything that you can kind of move around, uh, a dog bed, if you like scoot a dog bed around while they're in it, will they pop up? I mean, there's a number of things that uh, you guys can work on at home to just build resiliency in your dog and then layer noises um, on top of it. Now there's basically three other things. It's kind of key ingredients for, for this. One is to go to a very busy area and let your dog not only walk very closely to people, like if you can go through a crowd a little bit, that's like just weave through a crowd, that's really useful, but also sit and observe a lot of people going by and just watching the world go by. That's one of the key things that you need to have first before being able to go on a plane. The other thing is working up to a long downstay. So you need to practice a downstay just on the floor, no bed, no nothing for at least a couple of hours. So that needs to be something that you do you, your dog already knows how to do a downstay. So a week or two before your flight, make sure they're building up to one to two to even three hour durations in their downstays where they don't necessarily have a, a bed. Creating an on off switch with your dog is always really useful. So what I mean by that is even if you don't have any behavioral issues you're working on with your dog, can you go in the yard, pull out a toy, get your dog really, really amped up, like almost to the point of like nipping at you, kind of like you saw her do, and then be like, okay, enough, lay down. Good. And, and they listen and they don't like just get really jazzed up if you get up and move again. They, they have their on switch that you're in charge of and their off switch. And then you can turn them on again, play with them, rough house with them, throw the ball, good job, good job, good job, down. Get up, walk away, move around, pet them without their tail going crazy and them thinking they're gonna get up. That on off switch is key. And real quick, the final thing is, how does your affection affect your dog? If every time you touch them, they're getting amped up, you have too much emotional connection with your with your dog. And you, you need to be able to touch them a little bit sometimes without them shooting through the roof. So you wanna practice that calm affection and that relationship with your dog so they don't see you and just get amped up or touched by you and get really overexcited.